Welcome to Real Scary, the home of true scary stories, where we bring you the most unnerving of content. From British ghost stories to the most gruesome of murders. If you are quite partial to a scary story, you're in the right place. Raynham Hall is a stunning 400 plus year old country house situated in Norfolk, England and that has been the seat of the Townsend family since it was built. It is also the location where the world famous image of the Brown Lady was captured. The hall was built in 1619 by Sir Roger Townsend and many state that it was designed by Inigo Jones. The extensions and interior added later were the works of William Kent once a painter of coaches and who turned his talents to designing houses and furniture. Much of his finest works can be seen in the hall, including a beautifully carved chimney, decorated doorways and mosaic paintings. The grand ceiling of the marble hall was one of Kent's masterpieces. The estate covers 7,000 acres and occupies the first seven miles of the Wensum River. It is also one of the oldest buildings in Norfolk and that was inspired by European architecture. It has been home to the Townsend family for more than 400 years and the hall's most famous resident was Charles Townsend, the second Viscount who lived at the hall from 1674 to 1738. During the Second World War, the British military requisitioned Raynham Hall where soldiers lived side by side with the Townsend family until the war had ended. On September the 19th, 1936, country life photographers Indri Shira and Captain Provend, who were on assignment at Raymond Hall, took what is arguably one of history's most famous examples of ghost photography. The unearthly veiled something that they captured slowly gliding down the hall staircase is widely believed to be the Brown Lady of Raynham, who is said to be the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole, an 18th century mistress of the manor. Many listeners to this video may be familiar with the image you now see, but most listeners will not be aware of that less than a year before it was taken, the Lady of the House a Miss Gladys Dowager Marchioness Townsend published a book of true ghost stories and wrote I must confess I believe in ghosts and I have for many years lived in a house that is definitely haunted and she was not the only aristocratic homeowner of Raynham Hall to hold such beliefs nor was she the first to write about them 200 miles north of Raynham Hall is Chillingham Castle, which is in Northumberland, and which is the former home of American-born Countess Leonora Tankerville. Lady Leonora began documenting ghostly sightings at her 13th century castle as early as 1895. In fact, her first paranormal experience of the very aptly named Chillingham came to her in a dream and which was many, many months before she actually took up residence. In her dream, Lady Leonora's deceased brother-in-law, whom she had never met, but recognised from photographs she had seen, greeted her at the gates of her soon-to-be home, Chillingham Castle. When she finally visited the place in the flesh, she thought to herself, this is the second time I find myself approaching the gates of Chillingham Castle, but strangely, it's the first time I have actually been. And by 1925, Lady Leonora had amassed enough paranormal material to fill an entire guidebook. For both women, a strong interest in the supernatural was in keeping with the interest for spiritualism, which was rife at the time. 
They both had a special investment in all things spiritual, particularly ones associated with their own homes. This was an age in which loss and decay hung over many formerly exceptional residences, and for struggling owners, a haunted history was one way to stay connected to a very interesting past. At its height in the 18th century, Red Brick Raynham Hall was renowned for its beautiful and daring architecture, lavish art collections and powerful owner. Raynham Hall was originally constructed in the early 1600s. The house was expanded a century later by the famed Palladian architect William Kent under the direction of Charles II, Viscount Townsend and the then leader of the House of Lords. Unfortunately, by the end of the 19th century, Raynham Hall had fallen on hard times, brought about by a major agricultural depression and the spendthrift habits of its owners, which ultimately led to Raynham Hall's downfall. And in 1899, John, the sixth Marquess of Townsend, inherited the bankrupt estate which indirectly forced him into selling off the family art collection, rent out the hall, and also to find a very rich wife, which he did. And in August 1905, he married Gladys Sutherest, the daughter of a very successful lawyer. It wasn't until after the passing of the Marquess in 1921, that the Townsend family returned to its seat and the Dowager Marchioness took on the difficult task of restoring Raynham Hall to its former glory. No doubt she was amused from the start with the tales of the former lady of the house, who rumour had it remained in residence. Folklore states that Lady Dorothy, sister of Robert Walpole, endured an extremely unhappy marriage to the second Viscount Townsend and many claim she was unfaithful, whereas others claim it was her extravagant spending habits that incurred the Viscount's wrath. Whatever the case, Lady Dorothy died under extremely mysterious circumstances, which may be in part why she still continues to roam around the vast area of Raynham Hall. The first documented sighting of Lady Dorothy occurred way back in 1835, a visitor by the name of Maj Loftus said he saw a shadowy woman in old-fashioned clothing dressed in brown with hollow sockets for eyes. The next year a Captain Frederick Marriott who was a close friend of Charles Dickens reportedly fired his pistol at the brown lady which went straight through the ghostly figure lodging in the doorframe behind the misty form. Sightings continued well into Gladys's time, with her own son George and his friend claiming to have met the lady on the staircase, who not only terrified, but also puzzled them, because they could see the stairs straight through her. Armed with this array of stories, the Dowager Marchioness concocted an unusual scheme to possibly help revive the reputation of Raynham, she would write a book about the haunted houses in which her own home, Raynham Hall, would take centre stage. True Ghost Stories 1936 A compilation of 32 tales began with Raynham Hall. More than a rehashing of the Brown Lady legend, it also served as a reminder of Raynham's architectural splendour and connection to important historic personages, which included the first Duke of Monmouth, who was another reported ghostly sighting at Raynham Hall. It was a remarkably odd yet very successful publicity stunt. The story, which coupled with the country life photograph, really helped put the house back on the cultural map. In Northumberland, Lady Leonora was growing very accustomed to her new abode, Chillingham Castle, a medieval stronghold turned country house close to the Scottish border. 
The place must have come as a big shock to Leonora van Marta, a music teacher who had lived a relatively normal life in America before she met her husband, Mr. George Bennett, the future seventh Earl of Tankerville in New York in 1894. The castle to which George brought his bride was in very poor condition. Evidence remained of the extravagant sums that had once been spent on Chillingham Castle in anticipation of royal visits, such as the construction of the Great Hall in honour of James VI in 1603, and its lavish redecoration two centuries later for the future Edward VII. But after more than 150 years of peace with Scotland, the castle was no longer significant, strategically speaking. It was now simply a family home that was deemed impractical. Lady Leonora's diary documented her early days at Chillingham Castle and painted a picture of an extremely anxious new wife in an environment she could not familiarise herself with. She suffered from the damp, heavy English breakfasts and long and lonely nights in her bedroom as the men of the house spent all their time in the lounge into the early hours. Leonara, however, did have one way of keeping herself entertained. Ghost hunting. According to the old housekeeper, Lady Leonara wrote the following in her diary. All afternoon I have been visiting the locations of ghost sightings. I had no idea there could be so many apparitions living under one roof. There were many reported sightings of the ghost of an old woman believed to be the victim of poisoning or the plague, who frequently appeared begging for water. Another common reported sighting was that of a radiant blue child. The drifting aroma of rose water, which is said to be the calling card of the other reported lady ghost, albeit a grey and not brown one. Following her husband's death in 1931, Lady Leonora abandoned Chillingham Castle, which became vacant for 50 years until it was purchased by the present owner, Sir Humphrey Wakefield. Sir Humphrey quickly recognised the potential of his haunted history. Today he markets Chillingham as the most haunted castle in England, open six months out of the 12 for candlelit ghost tours and spooky overnight stays. It hosts some 20,000 visitors each year. Raynham, however, seems to shy away from its haunted reputation. On the handful of days it is open to the public, visitors are encouraged to explore its architectural beauty rather than its ghostly residence. Thank you for joining me in our latest edition of Scary Stories. I do indeed hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, I would ask that you like, share and subscribe. And until our next unannounced rendezvous, be safe and sweet dreams. <laughs>